Top 12 Biggest Myths About Weight Loss, Part 1 There is a lot of weight loss advice on the internet. Most of it is either unproven or proven not to work. Here are the top 12 biggest lies, myths, and misconceptions about weight loss. 1. All calories are equal. The calorie is a measurement of energy. All calories have the same energy content. However, this does not mean that all calorie sources have the same effects on your weight. Different foods go through different metabolic pathways and can have vastly different effects on hunger and the hormones that regulate your body weight. For example, a protein calorie is not the same as a fat or carb calorie. Replacing carbs and fat with protein can boost your metabolism and reduce appetite and cravings, all while optimizing the function of some weight-regulating hormones. Also, calories from whole foods like fruit tend to be much more filling than calories from refined foods, such as candy. Summary, not all calorie sources have the same effects on your health and weight. For example, protein can increase metabolism, reduce appetite, and improve the function of weight-regulating hormones. 2. Losing weight is a linear process. Losing weight is usually not a linear process as some people think. Some days and weeks you may lose weight, while during others you may gain a little bit. This is not a cause for concern. It's normal for body weight to fluctuate up and down by a few pounds. For example, you may be carrying more food in your digestive system or holding on to more water than usual. This is even more pronounced in women, as water weight can fluctuate significantly during the menstrual cycle. As long as the general trend is going downwards, no matter how much it fluctuates, you will still succeed in losing weight over the long term. Summary, losing weight can take a long time. The process is generally not linear, as your weight tends to fluctuate up and down by small amounts. 3. Supplements can help you lose weight. The weight loss supplement industry is massive. Various companies claim that their supplements have dramatic effects, but they're rarely very effective when studied. The main reason that supplements work for some people is the placebo effect. People fall for the marketing tactics and want the supplements to help them lose weight, so they become more conscious of what they eat. That said, a few supplements have a modest effect on weight loss. The best ones may help you shed a small amount of weight over several months. Summary, most supplements for weight loss are ineffective. The best ones can help you lose a bit of weight, at most. 4. Obesity is about willpower, not biology. It is inaccurate to say that your weight is all about willpower. Obesity is a very complex disorder with dozens, if not hundreds, of contributing factors. Numerous genetic variables are associated with obesity, and various medical conditions, such as hypothyroidism, PCOS, and depression, can increase your risk of weight gain. Your body also has numerous hormones and biological pathways that are supposed to regulate body weight. These tend to be dysfunctional in people with obesity, making it much harder to lose weight and keep it off. For example, being resistant to the hormone leptin is a major cause of obesity. The leptin signal is supposed to tell your brain that it has enough fat stored. Yet, if you're resistant to leptin, your brain thinks that you're starving. Trying to exert willpower and consciously eating less in the face of the leptin-driven starvation signal is incredibly difficult. Of course, this doesn't mean that people should give up and accept their genetic fate. Losing weight is still possible, it's just much harder for some people. Summary, obesity is a very complex disorder. There are many genetic, biological, and environmental factors that affect body weight. As such, losing weight is not just about willpower. 5. Eat less, move more. Body fat is simply stored energy. To lose fat, you need to burn more calories than you take in. For this reason, it seems only logical that eating less and moving more would cause weight loss. While this advice works in theory, especially if you make a permanent lifestyle change, it's a bad recommendation for those with a serious weight problem. Most people who follow this advice end up regaining any lost weight due to physiological and biochemical factors. 
a major and sustained change in perspective and behavior is needed to lose weight with diet and exercise. Restricting your food intake and getting more physical activity isn't enough. Instructing someone with obesity to simply eat less and move more is like telling someone with depression to cheer up or someone with alcoholism to drink less. Summary Telling people with weight problems to just eat less and move more is ineffective advice that rarely works in the long term. 6. Carbs make you fat. Low carb diets can aid weight loss. In many cases, this happens even without conscious calorie restriction. As long as you keep carb intake low and protein intake high, you'll lose weight. Even so, this does not mean that carbs cause weight gain. While the obesity epidemic started around 1980, humans have been eating carbs for a very long time. In fact, whole foods that are high in carbs are very healthy. On the other hand, refined carbs like refined grains and sugar are definitely linked to weight gain. Summary Low carb diets are very effective for weight loss. However, carbs are not what causes obesity in the first place. Whole, single ingredient carb based foods are incredibly healthy. What do you think? Let us know what you think below.